30 p.m. and I'd like to call the June 18, 2021 special board meeting of the Nile Bain District Library Board to order. Uh, Cindy, please take the roll. Trustee Derwood? Here. Trustee Marisha? Here. Trustee Shellisau? Here. Trustee Makula? Here. Trustee Rosansky? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. Trustee Kinnadis? Here. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. We all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four is public comment. Are there any public comments for tonight? <clears throat> so, Tisha got the Ashcroft. an official police report filed by criminal for criminal vandalism. Two, what was recorded on the security cameras relative to the criminal vandalism? Were there such videos? Three, what were the costs involved in cleaning up? Four, what plans were been made to prevent such future violations of public property? And five, the photograph of the graffiti seems to have included a cart and chalk from inside the library, were any employees involved in the execution, production, promotion, or defense of that graffiti? Please have a sentence. Board of Trustees, please pass a Board of Trustees re resolution and then issue an immediate press release. The Niles Main Library District will in no manner ignore Displacement of its properties by individuals or group who act with apparent and premeditated, premeditated viciousness, causing the expenditure of time and money to rectify criminal debasement. The district will pursue every legal option for the prosecution of such behavior in these cases as felonies in the manner prescribed by law. Thank you. Mary Cooney. Um, I've been using this library for, I'd say, about at least 10 years. I, my background, I was a CPS teacher, probably a challenging job. Your job is challenging. Um, I find this library to be one of the best, and I go to other libraries. I'll call myself a library hopper. I've been to Glenview Library. I go to, I used to bring my little nieces to Morton Grove Library. I go to Edgebrook Library. I, I like to be informed. And I don't understand what you're doing, some of you, and I don't know exactly who it is. But as a teacher, I know when people and new people come in, new principals come into schools, they don't initially shake things up. <coughs> They try to work with what they have if it's been working. And this is where I don't understand what some of you, your motives are. I find this to be a very well-run library. Uh, Mrs. Lemke, I'm in the library very often. She'll, she'll greet me. She's walking around, checking things out. And as for this, uh, as for the gray, I see him come to the rescue down there because I work in the, I mean, I, I, I do my work in the computer lab. And whenever he's needed, he's there. He's Johnny on the spot. So I am here, I guess, really to, I feel bad for, because you have jewels here. And I, I come, I come here just 
sometimes about every day. I mean, you, you could ask some of these people. They see me here a lot because I believe in libraries. Cutting funds, libraries, they inform, but they also uh, bring a community spirit. They have programs. They have programs for, for all of us. And they, that builds community. Um, I just hate to see some of my friends upset that work here because I think this is a top library in the whole region. And I've been to Park Ridge also. I can't take books out of that library. And I think learning is for everybody. I don't think in today's world you can, what's the word I want? I can't think of a word I want. But anyhow, I'm just here to say, I think some of you should, should question your motives and why you want it. Because if you're supporting libraries, I see this staff, I have not met one person, not one, that wasn't good. These people are efficient, they've helped me. I didn't really know much about technology. But when I came here, Ruth Schuster, I mean, there's a whole lot of them. Susie Wolf, you've got top people here, and I just hope that you don't ruin it. And that's what all I'm going to say. Thank you. All right, there are some written comments. The first one is from Illinois Action for Children, someone named Ann Conan. My name is Ann Conan and I am an early childhood mental health consultant with Illinois Action for Children. IAFC is a nonprofit organization whose mission is being a catalyst for organizing, developing, and supporting strong families and powerful communities where children matter most. The consultation program is free and offers a strengths-based relationship approach to our work with home-based child care programs and child care centers serving children birth through age five. In working with child care programs, we hope to increase teacher and director knowledge and understanding of child development and social emotional learning, decrease suspension and expulsion, improve communication between programs and families, and see an improved quality of relationships between parents and children, teachers and children, teachers and parents, and within teaching teams. Part of my role as consultant is to offer free professional development workshops to child care providers and preschool teachers. I partnered with April Lee, Youth Services Librarian and Preschool and Daycare Liaison in 2018, having met her when she was working at a child care center I consulted with. April had attended a workshop I did at that center and approached me about offering workshops at the library. I was excited about this opportunity to partner, which allowed me over the years to connect with a diverse group of child care providers and preschool teachers to offer workshops on topics that ranged from sensory processing to challenging behavior, self-care, and brain development. All the workshops were well attended, even when transitioning to offering them virtually when the pandemic started. April recognizes and understands the importance of offering experiences and opportunity for providers to come together and learn about topics that impact and influence their work with young children. The workshops allowed for increased capacity and understanding of child development, the importance of relationships, and how to best take care of yourself to show up and teach young children each day. I truly value my relationship with April and the connections I have made through Niles Main Library hosting the workshops. Over the years and getting to know more about April's role at the library, I have learned about the services and support offered in the community. The early childhood focused programming offered to the community through the Niles Main Library strives to create and maintain partnerships with teachers and child care providers in order to enhance the experience young children receive in forging a love of books and learning. The librarians at Niles Main Library bring a level of professionalism, passion for working with children, families, and teachers, and an overall dedication to the field of early childhood and the community. The proposed budget cuts, which include in-person or virtual outreach story times to child care programs and centers, the ability for teachers to request books for a certain subject or age group to be loaned out, teacher library cards allowing longer checkout periods, 
and bulk loan of old library books meant for hands-on child use in classrooms could no longer be available. Child care programs and preschools do not have their own libraries and oftentimes operate with small budgets which would not allow for replenishing of books when needed or transportation for field trips to a local library. The services and support offered by the library and its programs provide children with a wide array of books to read and experience, both during in-person story time visits or when children come to the library with their families for the first time after a story time visit. There is so much joy for young children that comes from reading books and being exposed to new and exciting things to learn about. Having the opportunity for story times, visits, story time visits allow children to learn, grow, and cultivate a love of lifelong learning, all of which happens through the power and importance of relationships established by the caring and professional librarians at Niles, Maine. It is my hope that the board will consider the value of these services to the community and the relatively low cost to the library before deciding to discontinue aspects of the library's programming that benefit the underserved portions of the area. Please contact me if you have any questions or if I can be of further assistance. Ann.conan at actforchildren.org. Second comment is from Stephen Sanders. I want to thank Susan, Greg, and library staff for all they do to keep the library running. Without your dedication, I would have never have used a 3D printer or laser cutter, received advice on property taxes, or had access to GoPros. Because of you, I have developed new skills and hobbies. I want everyone to know their value to me and the community. This one is from Kathy Toy. I am still trying to put the pieces together in the puzzle I call the vindictive trustees. What I've come up with so far is that Joe McCoola is making these budget cuts because he is trying to get revenge against the library because he sued the library and lost. Which, by the way, if you don't know, cost us, the taxpayers, upwards of $25,000. Carolyn Derblick is trying to get revenge because no one on the two previous boards ever agreed with her, and now she has the ultimate power she is wielding, now that she has the ultimate power she is wielding it in insane ways. Olivia Hanusiak is getting revenge for her father, Chris Hanusiak, president of the Friends organization, because of how the situation with the Friends ended up. Suzanne Schoenfeld, I can't quite figure out, but she seems to be acting like a lemming. Now, if these scenarios sound crazy to you, they do to me, too. But this is how I perceive the four trustees are acting, trying to dominate the library staff and community. Another dominating factor I perceive is having the trustees sitting up on stage. We all put our pants on in the same way, and no one is better than the person sitting next to you. I believe the trustees should be on the same level as the staff and community members. This is a library, not the Supreme Court. Elizabeth Seaskin. At Wednesday's meeting, Dave Carabata said the quiet part out loud. Cut staff? Boy, I hope you do. I don't know that I have ever seen any, someone so gleeful, openly and gleefully call for eliminating middle-class jobs in their own community. And your budget should certainly make him happy. You sometimes point to the salary of the highest paid workers at the library to mislead voters. The truth is that library workers are middle-class workers, and many of our staff also live in the community. When you were first sworn in, many staff wrote letters telling you what it would mean to lose their jobs that they are supporting families and struggling to pay rent. Perhaps that is why you cut these comments off. Many of the positions at the library that you are cutting fall in a salary range that begins at $31,000 a year or less. Your shameful budget even cuts jobs that are part-time and minimum wage. Carolyn Derblick and Joe McCoola have tried to justify these cuts by claiming they are thinking of the taxpayers. They say, that what those of us sending emails and making public comments don't understand is that sharp cuts are needed because of the people that were hit hard by salary cuts, furloughs, and layoffs during the pandemic. Here's the problem with that argument. Those people are also us. I don't know what the trustees and those close to them experienced over the last year and a half, but I can tell you what I saw. My husband is one of the people Carolyn pointed to that had his salary reduced when the pandemic hit. Our friends and family include laid off restaurant staff, retired police that lost their security work, small business owners that tried to stay afloat making masks, furloughed flight attendants, not to mention those out of work because they were sick or caring for a sick family member. 
During the pandemic, my job had me at meal distribution sites with families struggling to get enough to eat. Over the course of the last year, I heard plenty of people talk about how libraries helped hold their family together, that libraries were their lifeline. I heard plenty of, help of people hoping for the library to reopen so they could use the computers, learn a new skill, or get help from librarians to find a new job. I heard from people who saw the library for what it is, an agent of change, lifting up the economic prospects of the entire community. No one, not one person, no matter what they faced this past year, was hoping for cuts to library services or staff. The people I know are horrified at what is going on here. That is because for those of us without large expensive homes, your cuts will barely cover the cost of a family meal at McDonald's. But what we'll lose will have ripple effects that pull down the entire community. Every cut to staff is also a cut to services. And as I watched Joe McCullough at Monday's meeting casually cut budgets and just forget why he reduced a line so low it would mean firing staff and make fun of a librarian who tried to tell him about being a working mom, it made me realize that your claims of concern are a lie. Those of us that faced cuts and layoffs and furloughs over the last year don't want to see other middle class workers face these hardships. We don't want to see jobs lost in our community any more than we want to see empty businesses. You don't rebuild a community by cutting jobs and services. We want to see the money we invested in this library used to lift up everyone in our community. We want to see the library at full hours and fully staffed. We need every staff member from the part-time shelvers to the award-winning librarians to our director, Susan Lemke, who has served this community for over 20 years. Please, stop using the tough times we're going through as an excuse and listen to the voices of your neighbors that know our library is a central part of rebuilding a thriving community for all of us. And the last one is from Jeanette Lee. Dear board members, it was very disappointing that you attempted to move public comments to the end at the last meeting. Silencing the community is disrespectful of the community you say you serve. A sneaky move that even the mayor had to tell you was a bad idea. I'm also disappointed in your decision to hire a CPA to do the work of a current staff member. The candidates who ran on fiscal responsibility and eliminating duplication are now spending a lot of money on duplicating the work of a current staff member. It's not fiscally responsible. Also distressing is the way you blindsided him without talking to him or his boss first, but letting him learn of this through an agenda item. If just plain common decency, to talk to people before making these sorts of sweeping changes. Again, another disappointment is how you dismissed Trustee Keen Adams' ideas for professional coaching and enlisting the help of a parliamentarian. You didn't even respond to these ideas and just seemed anxious to move the meeting along without acknowledging her suggestions. You also refused to answer the question about why four trustees haven't responded to a FOIA request saying she should ask you privately. I think the public would like to know the answer to this question as well. Lastly, I'd like to mention yet again the outreach services that you have cut. cut. At the last meeting, Carolyn said, finally for once we should consider collaborating with the schools and the daycares. This is a blatant example of how this board does not understand the workings of the library. These outreach services are exactly that, a collaboration with the schools and daycares. As for the senior outreach, Joe has repeatedly said that there is, quote, plenty of staff at senior centers to do this job instead of having our library staff do it. Has Joe checked with the nine centers the library serves to see if there is indeed plenty of staff who can handle this work? From my experience, senior centers are understaffed, yet Joe likes to sit up on the stage and act like he is an expert on the staffing situations at these residences. I don't know, understand why this board is so disrespectful and refuses to listen to staff and the community about these decisions they are making. I don't understand why two of the trustees never have any comments or questions. I really don't understand what the vision of the library is because it seems like these board members are intent on dismantling it. Please consider slowing down, listening to the experts, and showing some common decency and respect. Um, I just would like to also respond to Tisha's uh, comment. I just, I do have to apologize to the board. When I saw the chalk drawing, it was chalk, two minutes to spray with a hose.
but it was a, it, I did consider taking it down, but Dave was on vacation, and it was supposed to rain that day, so I didn't do it. It did rain the next day, but it wasn't enough to erase it. And then I figured, well, you know, Dave's still on vacation. I'll just wait, and if somebody complains, I'll, take, I'll find somebody that can take it down. I should have taken action earlier, and I do apologize for that. Thank you. Do you want to roll call on that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, thank you. Trustee Derwick? Yes. Trustee Hanishak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosansky? Okay. Trustee Olson? Okay. Trustee King Adam? No. And what was the time? I'm sorry. I had 621. It is 10.42 p.m. and I'd like to call the June 18, 2021 Special Board Meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board to the order. Cindy, would you take a roll, please? Trustee Jarlick? Here. Trustee Hanashan? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Trustee Shadow Here. Trustee McCoola? Here. Trustee Rosansky? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. Trustee Kina? Here. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the resignation of Executive Director Susan Lemke? Oh my god. Phil! So moved. No, no, no. I have to get this on the record. Hey, hey. Do I have a motion to accept the resignation of the executive oh. director? Oh. Children. Do I have a motion to accept uh -huh. the resignation of executive de director Susan Lemke to accept oh. salary? First, Shame. 2021. 22 years. 22 years. 22 years. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh. You should not be ashamed of a century. Cindy, please take a vote for the roll. She's earned it. Yep. I'm sorry, who seconded? I did. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. She deserves to be here list. more than you. Oh my God, yes. 1,300 votes at most. Could you please hit the roll? Trusty gentleman. Here. Or yes. Boom. Wow. Big surprise. Trusty Shame. 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 Shay! 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 No souls. Absolutely no souls. We it's are silent. We are burning our souls. It's silent. You guys are being adjourned, please. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yeah, big surprise. Motion to adjourn. Shame. 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 Shame